Hi. Hi. Who, who do I have here? Uh, I'm Austin Liu. I work with All Power Labs. All Power Labs. Yeah. Okay. So. And that's based here in San Francisco in the Bay Area? Yeah, we're in the Bay Area. We're based in Berkeley. Okay, great, yeah. great, great. Tell me what you have. I mean, okay. I'm really so, interested. Uh, let's take a peek over at the machine real quick. Okay. Okay. Right. So this thing is the this thing is the power pallet. It's a biomass genset. And the thing is running off of wood chips. And in this case we're running off of walnut shells. Uh -huh. Right? And so the machine basically uses these chemical processes over here. Okay. Right. So what it's doing is it's it's using it's converting this. This is a carbohydrate. It's basically cellulose, right? And it's converting cellulose into hydrogen and carbon monoxide. And uh, since those two gases burn in an engine, we can feed that into an engine and generate electricity. Okay. So it starts with drying yeah. the shells that you have, the walnut shells. Yeah. And, and then, then the next part is pyrolysis. Pyrolysis is the process of making charcoal. Okay, and right? you get charcoal and tar out of it. And uh, during the combustion process, we're burning the tar gases, right? And uh, that produces a lot of heat and water vapor and carbon dioxide. Okay. Right? And uh, tar cracking, all the tars that don't get combusted, we actually crack using, um, using high heat exposure, right? And uh, what happens is all this waste product here, uh -huh. this material, this is a waste product. However, when you percolate that, through hot charcoal. The charcoal is reactive enough. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, the, the hot charcoal is reactive enough where it will remove the oxygen off of these two and it will result in hydrogen gas and carbon monoxide. And since carbon monoxide and hydrogen are both explosive, you can feed that into an engine. And okay. uh, that's what's powering our engine here. Okay, great. And this is the generator that you were talking about. Yep. So this is the beginning. And um, this is basically doing it as we speak. Yeah, it right? is. And uh, we're powering this refrigerator and that oven over there. Okay, and we'll go over and take a look at it. Yeah. So this is the fridge that they're powering. And those are the cookies that they're they're heating up the oven so that they can bake the cookies. And you can see. And it's nice and cold inside. I can put my head in there now. Yeah. And um, tell me, um, you were mentioning the uh, market for this. You sold about a hundred of them. Yeah. And um, what countries are you in? <laughs> a lot in Southern Europe. Oh, right. really? Okay. There's a lot of interest in Southern Europe because oh, okay. um, the, uh, in Southern Europe there's a lot of small farms uh -huh. right? and uh, they, have, they have plenty of biomass and they have to pay people to get rid of it uh -huh. and they also are paying for electricity so it yeah. makes sense for them to just get one of these machines yeah. you know, and, and it, it kills two pigs with one bird, you know? <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So they, they, they get to they get to have their electricity and get rid of their biomass. That's great. And uh, we were looking at the pricing structure. And for a 10 kilowatt. Yeah, the 10 kilowatt model is about 19,000. Uh -huh. And the 20 kilowatt model is about 27,000. Okay, great. And what does a kilowatt? Um, uh, 10 kilowatt do. Uh, uh, a, a 10 kilowatt can power a small home. Oh, okay. Yeah. And a 20 kilowatt um, device can power, uh, I guess, a larger home. So for a farm, you'd probably want yeah. the 20 uh, kilowatt. And, and yeah, farm, farm equipment and various things like that. Oh. Now, the, the 20 kilowatt model, that 20 kilowatt rating is an intermittent peak. The stable peak is about, about 16. I see, stable yeah. peak is stable about peak's about 16. And okay. for the 10 kilowatt, uh, the stable peak's about 8. Great, right? great, great. But it, it, can, it can do intermittent, like short bursts right. of, of more. Okay, yeah. okay. Now, when, earlier when you heard the engine sort of readjusting, yes. the thing is, uh, we have a dynamic sort of, uh, the, the system only consumes as much biomass as there is demand for it. I see. Right? So, for example, if someone were to turn on a blender or turn on an oven, uh -huh. the, the load would go up, but when the load goes up, it wants to slow down the flywheel. Uh -huh. We have a very sensitive flywheel reader. It reads, the, it reads that the flywheel is slowing down, it immediately opens the throttle, and the engine adjusts to that in a fraction of a second. So if I open the fridge, I should hear it adjust? Um, Opening the fridge might not be enough, but when if you turn on the oven or turn on the burner or uh -huh. turn on a blender, you'll hear maybe just for a fraction of a second you'll hear it adjust. Okay, can right? I do that? Um, well, okay, let me see what I can do. Okay. So we're listening. Okay. Oh. Uh, I did hear that. I did. Oh, okay. Great, great, great. Now it's back to normal. Yeah. Okay. So most of them. The, the big benefit of this over solar panels and wind 
is that this thing can dynamically adjust. Solar panels generally will be overwhelmed by a power tool or like a, an oven coming on. Now tell me about the waste product. The carbon monoxide that's produced, is any of it released to the no, air? No, it, it's all burned. When, it come, when the smoke comes out the tailpipe, it's actually really loud here. Let's go over okay. here where it's... Okay. Yeah. So, um, let me know when you're recording or... So, we're on. Okay. So, basically, um, all of the carbon monoxide gets burned and gets converted back into carbon dioxide. The machine is actually carbon negative in its operation. Carbon negative. It is. Oh. Because every time you run through a barrel load of, of wood chips, the, the ash pit is filled with carbon chips. Oh. It, it's, it's filled with little char chips, right? Those char chips, are it's still it's still charcoal, okay. right? It's still it's still carbon. If you, bury, if you bury that in the ground, basically that carbon is not going to come back into the atmosphere, right? Oh. But the, um, the reason it, it does produce a little bit of that, that, that chip material is the, the um, charcoal chips that get too small start inhibiting the flow of gas. And we have to shake that out because right. it, uh, if you have it full powder, it, the gases won't go through. So the, the ash rate gets filled with that stuff. Okay, so yeah. let's look at this since we have it here. This is your mon monorator hopper. Yeah. That's where all of the um, walnut shells are right now. Yeah, yeah. Or, or wood chips, but yeah. And so. they go down into the drying bucket. And in the drying bucket, we recover heat from the gas to dry dry out the chips. Because see, at, the, so at the bottom of the reactor, the gases are about 700 to 600 to 700 degrees centigrade. Uh -huh. Right, and that's way too hot. And so what we do is we feed those gases across a heat exchanger uh -huh. that preheats the incoming air and it gives you a, be a higher quality combustion right uh -huh. and then once the gases come out here it's still several hundred degrees centigrade uh -huh. it's still like two to three hundred degrees centigrade we feed that after it goes through the cyclone to separate out the dust uh -huh. we feed that into the drying bucket and the drying bucket recovers that heat to assist in drying right and uh, the pyrolysis stage actually we recover heat from the engine's exhaust yeah. To, to uh, carry out pyrolysis. So our system is actually rather efficient compared to other um, uh, gasification units out there. Uh, we have three stages of waste heat recovery. Oh, cool, yeah. cool. Now, um, have you been to any of the locations to help install and stuff like that? Uh, I, I have not. I've not been there. Um, however, we occasionally do send our engineers out. Uh -huh. uh, we uh, we have a lot of units um, in in. Well, like I mentioned, Southern Europe, uh -huh. right? And uh, Southeast Asia, there's also a lot of interest in. Austin. Yeah. Thanks, Austin. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. So what are you there? So he's getting ready to bake the cookies. There's maybe 10 minutes, I'll be back. These are the walnut shells. Me personally making there? You are your team. Uh, well, actually, um, well. Personal scale power. It's a little noisy. Checking to make sure there's enough walnut shells, I guess. Here's more in case they run out. I wonder if they're going to fill it up.